supernatural resistance test is when you place your fingers in the sastum trigger and then push up to initiate the foot to invert. So you want to see how much force you need to get the foot to begin to resupinate. And that's rated usually on a five scale, one to five. Low, very, very easy, low, medium, high and very high. This is the fascial cord tension test. So when we pull back on the big toe to expose the fascial cord, you can see how much it's showing. So before and after, we'd say there's a medium fascial cord tension as you can see the prominence of the cord there. Again, before and after we can see the cord the prominence. That affects the design of the product and the need for using a fascial cord accommodation in the device. So here we're looking at the structural integrity of the foot. We're looking at the difference in the arch height from a non-weight bearing to weight bearing position. So here we're in a non-weight bearing position and then we place down and that's a weight bearing position. So we normally categorise that as going from a medium arch height to a lower arch height. We usually categorise the changes on a scale of five from flat to low to medium to high and very high. So here we're getting a change of one category from medium to low, so that's fairly standard for arch integrity. So we're looking at the medial calcaneal gradient and that's the this area here, we want to see how much soft tissue is in front of the calcaneus, the heel bone. When there's a lot of tissue in front of the heel bone, the skin comes along, the foot comes along and then comes up later and we call that a forward position and a low gradient. In other feet, when this, there's not much so much soft tissue here, it comes up sooner and there's a medium gradient. We call this foot probably more of a medium gradient and then a low, a high gradient is when there's hardly any soft tissue there and you'll find the contour comes up much quicker and in a much higher, steeper ascent to the apex of the arch and that's a high gradient. So again this foot is about a medium gradient of the amount of soft tissue there. The reason why we're interested in that is that soft tissue creates a packing effect and affects the amount of correction that might be applied to the orthotic device. Okay, so in a relaxed position, you just bend your knees slightly. Okay, this is a relaxed knee position, but this is a hyperextended knee. Push your knee back. So that's when the knee is hyperextending. It's good to know this because when the knee is hyperextending, it means the functional position of those muscles is tend to be much tighter. That affects their gait and helps force the foot over into a pronated position. Okay, uh, having a look from the front position, we can see with the knees hyperextended that we've got squinting patella and at the same time the knee sort of locking back it gives it more of a knock knee appearance in a way I also see if she was to bend her knees her knees would come together instead of coming out over the toes where they should be. This is a lunge test. Foot's 10 centimetres off the wall and we bend the knee so we can touch the wall. We'll go back again, we'll go one, we do one leg at a time. We bend the knee so we touch the wall. If the heel stays on the ground, it's a pass. But if the heel lifts up, so if we lift the heel up, that's a fail. So we've got a pass and now we do the fail. If we had a fail, lift your knee up, that's it. Modified Jack's test. What we're interested in is how much force we need to get it as we lift the big toe to get the windlass to commence. And if it's a moderate amount of force, or it's easy, or it's hard, here we're looking at a moderate amount of force to initiate the windlass. Okay, this is a hamstring tension test. You put the leg right angles to the body when it's prone, and then you lift leg up, and this is when the leg is in high tension, that's a high hamstring tension. This is a medium hamstring tension test when you can't go any further and this is low hamstring, hamstring tension. This foot here you can see the big toe joint slightly enlarged 
and it's slightly shorter than the second. So we want to know that this joint's slightly enlarged because that'll impact on how we design that orthotic device. Okay, here we're looking at the first ray. And here we can see that the first ray, the first metatarsal is in a fairly normal position in relation to the other metatarsals. So this is a fairly normal first ray as opposed to a short first ray. So this is the abductory twist. You can see how she's tying off, she's flicking a heel a bit, lifting her toes, it just does this flick just prior to her tying off on each foot. It shows there's a limitation of movement around the ankle joint. So instead of the ankle pivoting fully, it's getting to a point where she has to twist to get her foot off the ground. Quite an abductory twist. When the twist causes more pathologies when it's more ballistic. The more aggressive the twist, the more it can help cause pathology. Uh, this is an abducted gait pattern where the feet are really pointed out a long way from the midline. That's an abducted gait pattern. She's walking with both toes pointing 